Okay, here's another video on how to make a $10 plane. This was my first $10 plane. It's a little Cess nah that I made um, out of foam from Lowe's, a little scratch built foam plane. But when I was walking through Walmart today, I saw this. This is a Air Hog Titan. It's $9.97. It's a regular foam glider that you put together and just throw like the old ones we used to have back in the day. Um, but I got to looking at this thing. Haven't pulled it out yet completely. It's got a really nice, what looks like an EPP foam um, fuselage. Got a nice little, pretty good, pretty good width to it, and it's pretty good foam. It's got the, the little wings that, that snap into the sides. Pretty well constructed wings. What I'm going to do is try to cut ailerons out of this, cut a rudder out of that, cut elevator, um, install the wings. I'm going to try to slice open the canopy, gut it out to where I can put some radio and stuff in there. And I'm debating on either making this a prop or an EDF. I'd like to put an EDF on the top of this thing just to see how it's going to do. Um, I'll figure it out and show you a little bit more later. All right, here's the next step. You got to cut some elevators out of this uh, rear stab and you got to cut some ailerons if you want. I'm not sure that this plane would fly without ailerons. Um, because it is a pretty flat winged plane. It glides fine, but uh, I don't believe it would stay upright. So my suggestion is cut some ailerons out. Which you can see right here, um, I've taken just a regular wing like this. And I decided to cut the ailerons in the center. I suppose you could cut these pieces on the outside and it would affect the flight a lot better. But you would have to put some sort of linkage all the way from the outside in and put the servo in here to keep the weight off the wing tips. Because um, if you mount a servo out there, it'd just be too heavy. So what I decided to do is just cut this little flat. I left about an inch on the inside, um, on both sides. Cut, here I'll show you on this one, it's a little easier. Cut your surface out that you want, just a straight line. And then on the sides, cut one of them on a 45. You see right there. I left the front piece flat and then cut the back one on a 45. And then you tape the top, fold it, once you tape the top, Fold this all the way over like so. Tape the back of it. As you can see, I don't know if you can see that tape or not, but anyway, tape the back of it completely. And then when you fold it back, you've got a pretty perfectly functional control surface. And same thing with the aileron. Perfectly functional. That tape will hold. I plan on fiberglass in the whole plane anyway. You don't have to, but it makes it a lot tougher, holds it together. If you were um, accidental landings, as I call them, um, it, it'll hold together a lot better for fiberglass. Okay, here's what I got. I've got the motor mounted, got the elevators hinged, don't have them hooked up, got the ailerons hinged, got the radio installed, There's I got one antenna poked out each side, and what I did is magnetize my little canopy that I cut off the top. Just used a hot wire, um, you see my little setup right there, just to think. Uh, just the hot wire plugs into the wall. You can use anything, um, hot coat hanger, um, a saw, even anything would work. But I, I made a little hot wire over there. Go to YouTube, um, look it up. It's real easy to make. Got a magnetized canopy to where I can run all my wires through here. My battery will sit in this little gouge. The top of the canopy is gouged out too. Um, I use a spoon when you're doing that. Heat up a spoon. And it clears large areas and makes it pretty smooth. Um, just don't let anybody see you do it. They'll think you have an addiction of some sort. Um, what I did also is make a, it looks like a second canopy. If I can get this thing off. There. It looks like a second canopy, but what it is, is access to the speed controller to the radio. And I've got a hole here in the front. And air will travel over the speed controller over the battery and get sucked up through this hole and out the exhaust. So you put the first little piece of canopy on there and you see a little hole there where the air goes in. Second canopy goes over top of that. This canopy is your primary. The front one will never come off unless you need access to your radio or speed controller. But every time you swap a battery out, you're gonna be taking this back canopy on and off. Um, use magnets on that. It's got the servos hooked up. Ran wings are glued in place. Hot glue works great on this foam. Use it everywhere. Got the tail servo back there for the um, elevator. I have to tie the elevators in together somehow with a piece of wire or something. I'll figure that out tomorrow. So that's all for now. All right, I did a maiden flight. I was gonna have the camera there for the maiden, but I was worried that by having the engine on the top of the plane like that, even though it's sitting um, straight with the uh, incidents and the 
tail surface is actually angled up slightly. Not much. I figured the air would hit it and push it uh, and compensate. And it actually did. And it took zero power on the... I mean, I barely had the power um, cracked when I, when I tossed the thing. And it took off, flew as beautifully as you can imagine. My only problem was that the wings are super flexible. Um, so much so that I felt that if I had pulled back at all, um, they would have broke right off. So I'm going to take it and reinforce it with some carbon fiber up underneath, tape it, and um, that should correct all the flex problems, but I couldn't ask for a better flying plane. Um, it flew so good that I cut the power and glided it in, and it was gliding so slow I just re reached out and grabbed it by the nose and caught it. Um, didn't so much put a fingerprint on it. I mean, it was super stable. And I was wrong about the dihedral. It does have a pretty significant amount of dihedral, which makes it a really, really good trainer for people just getting into EDFs. Um, well, I'll get the carbon fiber in there and show you a little bit later. All right, this is just a quick demo on how I do my carbon fiber in the wings. You can see I've got this side already done. I used a soldering iron to burn a groove in there. Just draw a line wherever you want it. Try to keep your CG right. So I've got just about as much behind the, the CG that I do in front of it. Um, anyway. Take a soldering iron, burn a groove in it, lay some hot glue down in there, glue your carbon fiber rod in place, and then run a piece of this packing tape with the uh, fiber in it. Uh, because just the tape alone will provide enough strength to keep that wing from breaking or bowing very bad. You can notice just by putting one or two pieces of tape on there that it'll stop the wing from bowing for the most part. But I always like carbon fiber because it doesn't weigh very much and it's extremely strong. But anyway, um, I've got this. I use these little butane ones with the uh, a round tip in it. You can use whatever you want, uh, the pistol grip style. You can use a hot coat hanger if you want. I've done that before. But uh, I'm, you can see I've got my line drawn up in there. And what I'm wanting to do is run it up in the fuselage just a little bit. So I'll burn a small hole up in there. And then take this and just run it down that line. About a quarter of an inch deep is all you need. Um, I'm using hollow thin wall tube. Anything more than that is uh, overkill. It adds extra weight to the plane that you don't need. You don't want to fill this gap up with hot glue uh, because if you if you think of one stick of hot glue is probably cutting it close to a half an ounce or so. So the more hot glue you use in, you use in a plane, you don't realize you're adding weight, but you are. So just use the minimal minimal amount of hot glue necessary to get the job done, and uh, that's it. But I'll show you one other little thing I do. Oh, this is very hot. I've got a stone table, I can do that. Don't do that to your table. If it's not stone, your wife will have you. Take a coat hanger. Seat the end of it up and then run that coat hanger up in there. And it'll make, even though it's only a coat hanger, it's so hot, it'll make a hole roughly the size of the carbon fiber that you're putting in there anyway. So just kind of wall it around up in there and now you got your hole up into the fuselage. You don't want to tie just the, the carbon fiber in the wing, although it will help. Um, the more you get up into the fuselage to help tie the wing to it, um, the less flex and the better off you'll be. All right, maiden flight of the uh, $9, $10 Walmart glider. Let's see. Stable and slow. Great for a, a trainer for EDS. Looks like it'll still be somewhat aerobatic. It is a glider. Like by trade, so I'm assuming it'll glide. That's dead stick. It falls in the wind. Nice. Oh, handles nice. It's stupid. It, it, it flies like a trainer because of the uh, dihedral in the wings. It flies really good. See that tail fluttering on it? Uh huh. <laughs> that thing was moving an inch up and down. I have to uh, put some carbon fiber in that tail. It had a wicked flutter. <laughs> <laughs>